Good evening. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Governing Board of the Lammersville Unified School District on February 3rd, 2021 at 7.01 p.m. Um, Trustee Bonilla, if I could call on you for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, America and, to and to the Republic, the Republic for which it, for which it stands, stands, one nation, one nation, nation under, under God, 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 indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Ann Bonilla. Present. Colin Clements. Here. Sharon Lampell. Here. Stephanie Olson. Here. David Pombo. Here. Sunita Jathendra. Here. Thank you. Approval and or corrections to the agenda. Are Fair there none. any corrections or changes? Move Fair to none. approve the agenda. OK. Second. Second. Okay, um, motion by Trustee Clements and a second by Trustee Bonilla. Um, student, uh, student, <laughs> why did I drop my wording? <laughs> student vote. Student trustee preferential vote. Aye. <laughs> preferential vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries with five ayes. Preferential. Why couldn't I pull that up? <laughs> Okay, committee reports, district advisory committee, there is nothing to report at this time. District English language advisory committee, Trustee Bonilla. Yes, I attended the district English language advisory committee meeting on January 21st at 6.30 p.m. where uh, Ms. Buz Mrs. Buzatil presented information about growing self-confident children through goal setting and growth mindset to about 15 families. Um, this is a program that was put forth by uh, the Migrant Education Harvest of Hope program through the CDE, and uh, we encourage uh, parents to continue attending. It was a very uh, nice group, so thank you. Thank you. District English Language Advisory Committee. Oh, that's what that one was. Sorry. Education Committee, Trustee Pombo. Um, the Education Committee, our next meeting is Tuesday, February 16th at 6.30. Okay. Facilities Committee, Trustee Clements. Um, the next Facilities Committee meeting will be tomorrow, February 4th at 6.30, and it will be virtual. Policy Committee, Trustee Bonilla. We finished reviewing the last, the latest batch of policies, and uh, we will be talking about those this evening at the end of the agenda. Thank you. Safety Committee, Trustee Pombo. Our next safety committee meeting is Wednesday, February 17th at 3.30 and it will be virtual. Okay, and the wellness committee, Trustee Pombo. The wellness committee's next meeting is Wednesday, February 10th at 3.30 and it will also be vir virtual. Thank you. <laughs> Governing board reports. Uh, student member Jathendra. Um, I think last week, President Lampel touched on it, but uh, Mountain House had their first virtual awareness week where we had um, different clubs talk about current events and issues that students may not be updated on during um, the pandemic. And some of the things that we talked about was world hunger and its effects during these current times and trafficking and climate change and things like that. And we hope to have more of these in the future. Thank you. Trustee Clements? Uh, nothing to report, Madam President. Trustee Olson? I was able to visit two sites in the last few weeks. On, on January 28th, I, I went to Cordes Elementary and met with Principal Yeager, gave me a tour of the beautiful school. That's the first time I'd seen the inside and it's beautiful. Um, the recipe for the architecture and planning gets better each school, you know, the little improvements and suggestions that, 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 that have been made. And um, I also attended a site visit at Cuesta Elementary School with Principal Sharp. And that was uh, great getting a, a different perspective from a board's eye perspective versus, you know, being a parent at the school and um, very grateful that for all that they're doing to work and strive towards student safety and success. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Pombo? 
Nothing to report. Okay. Trustee Bonilla? Uh, in addition to attending the DLAC committee meeting on uh, January 21st, I also had the privilege today to attend a, uh, a seminar conference called Women Together through the SJCOE, and I was very excited to see several of our principals and vice principals in attendance. Uh, and it made me reflect on the role of women in our district and how we have so many women in positions of leadership and what a great uh, example we are for other districts in the area. So I just wanted to recognize that and uh, encourage us to continue that good work. Well, of course, Northern California even sends them to the White House. So, <laughs> okay. Um, I had the pleasure of visiting Wickland School and virtually observing a fifth grade Zoom session with Principal Manley. It amazes me how seamlessly the students and the teacher were clicking on different documents as they worked on including citations in their writing. And I'm sitting there trying to keep up with them. What the teachers and students are doing now is absolutely amazing. Um, I attended two webinars, one on budget perspectives and the other on the path to reopening schools, which of course changes every day. Um, many of our students, staff and community have been anxiously awaiting the return of sports. I know we're all excited for the potential return of cross country, boys and girls golf, girls tennis and swimming in February. Fingers crossed that this will happen. I'm sure the entire board joins me in congratulating Mrs. Joni Hellstrom on being selected AXA Region 7's co-administrator of the year. This award is well-deserved as Ms. Hellstrom works tirelessly as a champion for our students. <laughs> Yay, Joni. <laughs> um, while our students may not be in our schools physically at the current time, some of the regular activities that we're used to hearing about continue in a new format. Some of our students have recently attended two science Olympiads, the Mira Loma Invitational and the UC Davis Aggie Invitational. Between the two, we had many medals and places and congratulations goes to some of the students, couldn't mention all of the places, Erin Sue, Tina Lee, Paviana Batula, Jacqueline Prawira, Cindy Ta, Sakina Mukadam, Arash Madala, Alicia Royce, and Sri Subramanian. A lot of hard work being put in by those students at those Science Olympiads, and they are representing Lammersville very well. Um, Rishab Rai placed sixth in the Western Regional of a DECA competition called the Stock Market Game. This competition involves virtually investing in the stock market. The top 25 of the region will be invited to participate in the International DECA competition. This is the first time we have moved on in this competition. So congratulations to Rashab. Again, representing Lammersville very beautifully. Um, I would once again like to mention the great work being done by our students in leadership and other clubs. Students have recently been encouraged by their peers to become involved and participate in activities to increase awareness of Black Lives Matter substance abuse and prevention through the D.A.R.E. Club, saving endangered species, rainforest conservation, childhood trauma, and climate changes, just to mention a few. These encouragements keep coming out every day. So um, kudos to that group of leadership students to make sure that these things keep going on. In light of the high school's inability to hold their usual in-person curriculum fair, staff has put together a virtual fair that enables students and parents to acquire the information to make decisions on their requests for courses next year. The bright side of this, and we have to find the bright side in everything that we're doing, the parents and students are able to go back to the document and watch the presentation or read the PowerPoint a second time, where when it's live, they go, they get the information and they would have to follow up with email after that. So they did a great job putting that uh, presentation together for the students and parents. And finally, I'd like to take a moment to recognize the hard work of our counselors during this National School Counseling Week. Like all school staff, our counselors have had to create a new way of doing their work. They've worked tirelessly to meet the needs of our students academically and socially. So huge thank you to our counselors who are working very hard. Sorry it was so long. I wanted to get all of that in. 
receiving of public comment. Superintendent Nicholas, are there public comments? There are none. There are none, okay. Consent items for consideration. Um, governing board, wait, I think I'm reading the wrong thing. Governing board um, meeting minutes, contracts under $50,000. Ratification of 2020-2021 new hires and updated 2020-2021 fundraisers. Do we have a motion? Move to approve consent items for consideration. Second. Okay, with a first by uh, Trustee Clements and a second by, who was that? Olson. Trustee Olson. Olson, thank you. <laughs> um, student preferential vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries with five ayes. So at this point, I'd like to welcome the following people, following new employees to our Lammersville family. Arlene Dominguez, self-contained classroom teacher, Anna Duenas, food service lead, and Clifford Wallace, district receptionist, administrative secretary. Welcome to Lammersville to those folks. A district administrative report, superintendent's report. Uh, yes, I just have a couple of items. Uh, first of all, we'd like to piggyback on uh, President Lompel's uh, acknowledgement of Joni Hellstrom for her co-administrator of the year through AXA. Uh, uh, she's a, a, a joyous person. And those of you that don't know, uh, she and Principal Faubert do uh, almost weekly uh, so sing-along song-alongs, which are riffs <laughs> off of popular culture songs with uh, pandemic pick me ups um, to their whole staff and, and the community around Mountain House High School. And uh, she is a musical genius and Ben has a good voice, so it works out well. Um, <clears throat> second thing is another set of good news. I hope everyone can see this. Um, our district was named uh, best, one of the best schools in the country uh, by niche or niche uh, for 2021. It's called the best school district in America award. We're not the only one, but um, it's another uh, acknowledgement of the fine work, uh, starting with uh, an excellent board and excellent board decision making, all the way through to all of our staff and sites and, and leaders uh, amongst our community. So we want to thank our parents for the support, the kids for working hard, and all the people who were a part of uh, us and this uh, an additional nice acknowledgement for our, our district. Um, and then we just had a, a I had uh, Mr. Harrison um, put together just a quick update for um, on the dates for as we start to roll back into hybrid, uh, the late any latest guidance uh, around uh, school openings and uh, a little update on sports as well. So I'll, Mr. Uh, Associate Superintendent Harrison, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Dr. Nicholas. Board President Lampel, trustees, thank you for having me. There we go. All right, next slide. <clears throat> well, uh, there's a technical glitch, but we'll get her fixed here in a second. Can you, can everyone see the PowerPoint? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, that's the first step of fixing the technical glitch is we have it uh, so you can see it. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to get it, the button to work. And so there it is. There we go. <laughs> the magic of technology. Okay. Once again, Board President Lampel, trustees, thank you for having me. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, going back to in-person instruction again and some of the changes that the CDPH has uh, made for returning to in-person um, schooling. Uh, as well as, as Dr. Nicholas mentioned, some facts around some of the sports uh, that can start as of Monday, this previous Monday. So small group cohorts and STC are uh, going to begin back at school sites on February 9th, uh, TK5 uh, February 16th, and grade 6-8 on February 22nd. Uh, the high school is still undetermined at this time, as you are aware. We do have to be in the red tier to be able to consider opening, reopening the high school. So as soon as we have information that puts us in the red tier, we'll start uh, actively moving on that, um, that reopening. 
Uh, some good news for the high school, though, uh, high school sports. Uh, there are some high school sports permitted now through CDPH and CIF uh, when we're in the purple tier. Not deep purple, but we're in regular purple. And as of February 1st, we can have cross country, uh, golf, swimming, tennis, and track and field uh, begin to practice and uh, compete. <clears throat> now, um, I'm going to give you a little more information related to sports, but I want to give you a caveat, and that is this information may change. It changes about every four to five days. So this is the second iteration of this presentation. So, um, but any sports are good news for us and our kids in our community. So I wanted to point out some other um, um, sports that can begin. Uh, when we're in the red tier, baseball and softball can begin. In the orange tier, football, soccer, volleyball, and water polo. And then in the yellow tier, uh, basketball, uh, cheer, competitive cheer, and wrestling uh, can begin. Uh, and there's a couple of dates I just want to share. And that is, um, if football doesn't start by February 26th, there will be no football this year. And football must end by uh, April 17th. Uh, as well. So there's a start minimum date and an end date. Um, so that we'll see what happens, what plays out with the tiers. That doesn't look very good at this point. So we still have the required safety precautions. They've been adjusted slightly. The cohorting has changed for sports. The cohorts are now the, uh, so if you're on the golf, boys golf team, that's your cohort. If you're on the girls golf team, that's your cohort. Boys tennis, that's your cohort. So the cohorting has changed a little bit. They are required to have face coverings as long as what they're doing is not really intense. Um, if it's a, a, a sprinter or somebody doing a 400 meter, they may not be wearing a face covering during that event, but face coverings are required outside during sports as athletes can breathe and continue to compete uh, with them on. Uh, next slide, please. There you go. Thank you. Um, so the one of the things we had to do was post our COVID plan by February 1st, which which we did. Um, we've incidentally, we've had a, a COVID preparation plan on our website since August. Uh, this is a new requirement by the CDPH. Uh, and of course, we met that requirement as of August. And then we re up we uh, redid it and updated our plan that's on the website to include the new requirements of face coverings mandate for all grade levels. Um, and the school closure changes, which are three cases within three cohorts within 14 days. Uh, that's the new mandate. Uh, it is still 25% of your schools as well um, on the top end for school closures. Um, <clears throat> vaccine release is by tier. Our educators are in tier 1B at this juncture. That is another item that keeps changing um, as we move forward with the vaccine. Uh, close contact is uh, six feet for 15 minutes over a 24 hour period. That item changed from the previous plan. That's a, a new requirement. The 24 hour is, is uh, the adjustment. And then the close contact quarantine changed from 14 days to 10 days, along with uh, having to be 24 hours with no fever, with no medication. And the previous requirement was, was three days of no fever with no medication. Now they found that 24 hours with no fever and no medication is adequate. We also received new sample letters to staff and students related to positive COVID cases. Uh, we checked our letters that we had been using against the CDPH's new letters to make sure that ours fall in line with the new requirements uh, that they set forward. Uh, that is um, the updates, that is my report. I do have a question. Um, you might not have the answer. Why does football have such an early mandatory end date? Um, I, I don't have an answer for that. Um, one thing that I, I can say that may be related, and, and this is me guessing, um, is there are so many sports jammed into the four month period that uh, it's really gonna be a challenge to complete any of them. Uh, and when I say complete, there are no playoffs. There's no champions this year, none of that. It's just playing, um, you know, games and, and competitions. Uh, 
So that's a long-winded way of saying I'm not positive on the reason for that. Mm -hmm. I can't find out though. Thor, I had a question about sports too, uh, and you might not know this either, so it's fine if you have to get back. But I, I, I know so, some of the sports that are lumped together now are are usually separate seasons, and some of the athletes participate in both. Do do athletes have to choose one, or has um, have they allowed them to do both at the same time? So I, I do have an answer to that, and and the answer right now, mind you, right now, is um, they cannot participate in two separate sports during the same time because it violates the cohort. Um, so, so that's, that's, and it's the same with coaches. If, if a coach coaches boys and girls tennis, um, they have to be cohorted at different times. They can't overlap kind of the same rule. So. Um, I have a question on the football start and end dates. If, is there, any variation to that? In other words, if they can't start for a week after the the drop dead start date, is there any possibility of having a three game season, four game season, something shorter just to allow the kids to have a something? At this time, as of this meeting, the answer to that is no. Uh, but I do know that our conference is meeting. They're having webinars and meetings pretty regularly. And uh, I know CIF is in contact with CDPH. Um, so my answer right now is no, but that could change depending on what rulings come down. One more question, and it's not on sports. You said that we will look at the high school opening once we either get to red or have an indication that we are about to enter red. Once that happens, what, and I know you can't give me a, an exact number, but what are we looking at with the start of school? Two weeks, three weeks, a month? Um, so first, first part is it, it's gonna take at least three weeks to get into official red. So if we get any, any smell of red, the engine's gonna be turned on and we're gonna start pumping out information and getting coordinated and organized. The key is, is if we get into red, we need to start reopening because we they can't stop us from reopening if there were to be a back backflow back into purple. So logistically, it would we have to wait three weeks. Um, and we I I'm confident we could get everything rolling in that period of time. And hopefully the rollout of the vaccinations will will help expedite this. Um, Dr. Park was on the news tonight. Um, that I watched just before the meeting. And she said that San Joaquin County has the personnel and the infrastructure to get a lot of people uh, vaccinated. They're just waiting for the supplies, meaning the vaccine itself. I mean, they have the, uh, the syringes, um, but it's all up to getting that actual vaccination. But she said, we're ready to go. And I can also report on top of that is, uh, uh, with the exception of a very small numbers, um, the, the San Joaquin County Office of Ed has all of the uh, information of interested educators and staff uh, throughout the 14 districts uh, and charter schools in our county. So I, I would say the educational profession has organized itself very well. So when the call comes, we'll be able to move quickly. Great. So um, I had a question on the return to school. Um, so we are we are still planning to return to school under the hybrid model for the elementary grades, correct? Correct. Um, and I know that we were, unfortunately, we were not in school under the hybrid model um, long enough to have like actual data as to the efficacy of the hybrid model versus you know, say LVLA, where they're just all at home. Um, is, do, is there any anecdotal feedback from like maybe the school principals or, um, you know, about how that worked compared to how LVLA worked um, at all? So the anecdotal evidence is um, a very simple test. Happy kids, happy teachers. Um, that there was a breath of fresh air when little people showed up, 
that um, there was a um, spiritual uplift of the staff. Again, that's not academic, it's social emotional, but that was um, near universal across all school sites. And remember we got special day class, small cohorts, TK5 in uh, for uh, four to six weeks of instruction. Um, uh, Assistant Superintendent Sherburn showed that district-wide, um, there's a group of kids, about 25%, who we have some work to do with, but generally 75 to 80% of our kids are doing well, whether they're in distance learning or we're part of a hybrid model. Um, but to, to break that out, um, it is almost impossible because the period of time was so short yeah. and yeah. To, to get anything tighter than that. Happiness was one of the reasons why we went to the, uh, the hybrid model. So if that was our goal in terms of social emotional support for kids, um, we met that mark, um, but academically, I, we have no doubt. Thank you. Okay, district maintenance and operations report. Associate Superintendent Harrison. Thank you. AKA James Legrand. <laughs> Board President Lampel, trustees. I will be sitting in for Mr. Legrand once again and uh, reading his report. Uh, custodial operations staff are working on ensuring the campuses are ready for the students to start returning over the next three weeks. Maintenance staff is working on work orders. They finished adding the black metal fence panels to the exterior walls of the ceramics area at the high school. The project turned out real well. Uh, we had our annual fire inspection at Lambertsville on Friday, and good news, no major issues. Uh, we did have a new inspector. The fire inspector would like us to add some additional labeling on some items around campus. Uh, nothing major, just some labeling that we had to adjust. Mr. Legrand walked the uh, baseball field on Tuesday the 26th with the contractor. The recent weather has delayed the foul ball netting project. And uh, uh, the contractor indicated that um, later this week, he's gonna check the fields because uh, we wanna make sure we don't damage the fields when some of those big trucks drive across there to, to dig some holes and install those poles. Just a reminder, those, those poles are hold the netting that'll protect the uh, south side of the wall there where all the new houses are from balls, baseballs going into their yards. On Friday, the 29th, uh, the custodial staff did interviews for positions at Wickland, Cordis, and Cuesta. Uh, then we have three new candidates moving forward through the hiring process. That's great news. Uh, we still have two custodians outstanding that we still need to fill, though. Uh, Tuesday the 2nd, yesterday, uh, Jimmy spent the morning with the radio uh, company on the roof at Mountain House High School. Uh, they ran tests with the existing wire and antenna. The antenna failed. That might have been the contributing factor to some of the problems we've had at the high school with the radios. Uh, it will be replaced. Uh, they also scouted locations for the new repeater that we're installing that we're adding to the Mountain House High School campus, which will give us better coverage to the south part of town uh, for Cordis and then eventually Costa, so that we'll have good communications from the south end of town all the way to the north end of town. Uh, Mr. Legrand will attend the facilities committee meeting tomorrow night. Uh, they, he has a lead custodian meeting scheduled for Friday. The main agenda topic will be students returning to campus. Uh, and then uh, James and I have a Zoom meeting on Thursday the 18th for ongoing solar project where we're discussing the project status and, and next steps. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Moving on to action items. Consider approval of the 2020-2021 interdistrict transfer requests. Staff report. Um, move to approve the 2020-2021 Lambertsville Unified School District interdistrict transfer requests as of 121-2021. Okay, we have a motion from Trustee Clements and a second by Trustee Olson. Any questions or comments? Student preferential vote? Aye. Aye. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries with five eyes. Trustee don't, Pomba don't, wants don't, to be a student again. <laughs> don't laugh. I was a student once, I think. <laughs>
consider approval of 2021-22 interdistrict transfer requests. Staff report? Uh, none. Okay. <laughs> Move to approve 2021-2022 interdistrict transfer requests. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Trustee Olson and a second from Trustee Clements. Student preferential report? Aye. Uh, vote? vote. <laughs> Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries with five ayes. We are all in rare form tonight. <laughs> um, item C, consider approval of governing board resolution 2021-09 to allow assignment of teachers credentialed outside of major or minor under the licensing of certificated personnel law for the 2020-2021 school year. Staff report? Uh, yeah, so um, this has been a very complicated year. Um, normally we bring a few of these waivers forward. Uh, this year there's a significant list, a, a lot of it associated with LDLA, um, the creation of uh, different models uh, but this is a process when you have someone who's credentialed, but not credentialed in a specific area of which they're teaching. And it's a formal way uh, to make an exception to the rule. Um, and I was asked about this and then I investigated it with staff and um, we are reviewing our process. So um, this will be the last time we do this process this way, um, this late in the year. Um, but but to, in a nutshell, um, in order to pull off what we've pulled off, we have a number of teachers who are credentialed, but teaching um, in an area. An example, and Mr. Harrison, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, we might have a single subject, seventh or eighth grade teacher teaching multiple subjects to pull off the LDLA model of, and multiple occurrences of that. So um, uh, this happens every school year, but um, what we're, we're looking at is a, as a, uh, a more systematic way to address waivers uh, at the beginning of the year and if they come along throughout the course of the year um, and Mr. Miller has been working on that. Move to, oh, move to approve a uh, governing board resolution number 20-21-09 to allow assignment of teachers credentialed outside major or minor under the licensing of certificated personnel law for the 2020-2021 school year. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Trustee Bonilla and a second by Trustee Pombo. Any additional questions or comments? A student preferential vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries with five ayes. Item D, consider approval do, of measure do L. We need a, do we need a roll call vote? On oh, yes, I'm sorry. Do. Thank you. Roll call vote? Trustee Bonilla? Aye. Trustee Clements? Aye. Trustee Lampel? Aye. Trustee Olson? Aye. Trustee Pombo? Aye. And then we did the preferential vote for uh, student trustee Jathendra? Aye. Okay. Um, Thank you, Trustee um, Clements. No problem, 14. Okay. <laughs> All right, item D. Uh, consider approval of Measure L, General Obligation Bonds, Financial and Performance Audit Report, June 30, 2020. Staff report? Uh, yeah, very quickly. In 2016, our uh, community supported the facility needs of our district and passed a general obligation bond called Measure L. Um, and in the process of doing so, we did it under Prop 39, which has a rule that uh, at a 55% approval rate, um, there would be a citizens bond oversight committee. And it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Marina Neisman, who is the representative of our CBOC committee to, uh, uh, to confirm uh, the audit report. Uh, Marina, are you there? Yes, hi. Hi, Marina. Good hi, good evening, everyone. Hello. As a representative, Hi, um, as a representative of the CBOC, I can confirm that the bond audit was received by the committee members. Thank you. And Thanks. there were no findings. No findings. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve Measure L, General Obligation Bonds, 
Financial and Performance Audit Report, June 30th, 2020. Second. Well, second, and would like to thank Marina and the rest of the Oversight Committee for stepping up and, and their community service. Okay, we have a first by Trustee Olson and a second by Trustee Clements. Any questions or comments? Okay, student preferential vote? Aye. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries with five ayes. Thank you, Marina. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and item E, consider approval of audit certification form for the annual audit report ending June 30, 2020. Staff report? Uh, yes, at our last uh, board meeting, we approved the audit certification form of which uh, is filled out now and placed with our annual audit report, which has, uh, has been submitted uh, for ending on June 30th. Uh, and so we are submitting our audit report for formal board approval. Okay. Do we have a motion? Move to approve the annual audit report ending June 30, 2020. Second. Okay, we give that one to Stephanie. So we have a first by Trustee Bonilla and a second by Trustee Olson. Any questions or comments? Student preferential report? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries with five votes. Information and discussion item. First reading of updated board policies and administrative regulations. Staff report? This is our process. Uh, this is the first opportunity for board members to ask questions. If not, we will bring forward at the um, February 17th meeting, uh, the second reading and for approval. Like every time these come forward, I really appreciate the summary that's in the front rather than reading through hundreds of pages of stuff that's really routine and language that has to be in there. Anybody have any questions or comments on those board reports with the exception of mem board members who are on that committee and uh, Assistant Superintendent Harrison, thank you for all your work on those. My normal comment of thank you to district staff for going through all that. Okay, do we have a motion? Oh, no, we don't need a motion. So that will be on next the next board agenda for approval if there are no comments for any changes. Okay, in-person board meetings. So we had agreed that we would have this on um, our agenda. Uh, and we're coming up on the point of opening schools. So Superintendent Nicholas, in order to start this conversation, I did have uh, one question and that is, if we were to go to um, uh, the in-person board meetings while we're in purple, the public would still have to submit any questions or comments electronically. They would not um, be attending in person. Is that correct? That is correct. I would, uh, the November board meeting was done following the purple rules and we mm -hmm. had board members in person, public, not in person, electronic uh, public comment, and that would be the format we would follow. Mm -hmm. So comments and opinions from the board as to how to move forward? As I've said all along, if we are having students and teachers in person, I think board meetings should be in person as well. And my opinion is our next board meeting should resume the in-person format. I agree. Um, I concur also. I agree as well, but I do want to, um, having, having had COVID myself, having had my mom have COVID and in the hospital, I certainly respect, um, if a board member does not feel, if, if a board member or board members feels like it's not the right answer for them, I totally respect and support that. But it is important to me um, to be able to be in, in the board meeting if teachers are in the classroom and students are in the classroom. So I did discuss that with uh, district staff about having some people in person and some people um, uh, virtually, and it's clunky. It's not gonna be as smooth as when we're all 
uh, virtual or if we're all in person. So here's my question. And obviously I am um, in a minority of opinion. I don't understand what the purpose of having an in-person board meeting if the public can't come in. Well, the public not coming in is not our decision. It's it's by mandate, right. and mm -hmm. and I I understand your your point, but I feel like it's something that some of us, myself included, have said all along that if teachers are in classrooms, board members should be in the boardroom, and there's no more no more reason than that for me. I, I would echo that. I, I, um, I've actually been back in the office five days a week since July, but it was, you know, um, masks and social distancing and very careful. And of course, my son worked at in and out and I paid him to quit. And that's how we got it. Um, but, um, you know, so I, I feel strongly that if we're saying, hey, everything's safe enough for teachers to be in the classroom and students to be in the classroom, that I feel strongly that I should be in the boardroom. I do. I just and feel that there's more reasons to have a teacher in front of students than us in front of a camera on De Anza Boulevard or in our homes. I, I just don't see the difference. Uh, the, for me, the difference was hearing hearing a teacher and hearing representatives of the union um, uh, basically question, you know, saying, how could you, you know, how could you value your own health and safety um, above ours? Like you, you want to send us back to the classroom, but you're not even willing to go back into the boardroom. And since the day we shut down the schools back in March and we started doing board meetings remotely that my position has been the same um and so yes part of it for me is emotional like i don't want to hear that comment i it's that is not a fair comment it's not an objective comment and i i don't want my behavior to open this board or this district up to that accusation trustee bunny i think you were trying to say something i was i was actually going to bring up two things uh one is that you know our, our own state legislature is not in session. The the legislatures are working from home um, because of the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, so you know, as as elected officials of representatives of government, we might want to think about you know what is happening in other places like the state capitol. Uh, my other question was for uh, President Rampell. Um, she said that it is clunky to have some people at home and some people in the boardroom. That doesn't mean it didn't work, if I recall. I mean, it was a little more difficult, but it did work. Am I misunderstanding that? I think we've changed the system a little bit, haven't we, Superintendent Nicholas? Yeah, so um, as the resident technology expert um, to answer the question, uh, <laughs> what would happen is the people at home would be able to view, um, would be able to hear but not view the, the meeting in the way that they're accustomed to. So there would be a way to participate, um, but uh, at home, there I, I believe it's the video. Uh, you'd have to watch it streamed. You wouldn't be able to participate in the Zoom the way you're accustomed to. I think that's the clunkiest part. Oh. Uh, we think, and I, with the caveat, we think um, that we fixed some of the echoing problem um, and some of the other things that we experienced in the past. So uh, yet to prove, but that, that, that was the clunkiness that was explained to me. Uh, my other question is, I know that there can be some difficulties with Zoom. Have we tried using a different kind of software like Microsoft Teams or something else? We um, expanded our Zoom uh, menu mm -hmm. uh, and the, the problems we were having with the, the, the model we had originally purchased um, have been resolved and we were pretty confident. Uh, at least the tech people have, have told me we're confident that that, that that expansion was a good call. Okay, thank you. I would just like to respond to something that Trustee Bonilla said about our state legislature and 
I, for one, don't feel like we should model our behavior after the legislature, legislature of the state of California. My two cents. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it was a good point. Um, if I could chime in, I just wanted to say, I, I'm, I'm definitely with uh, Trustee Pombo and Trustee Clements that I feel strongly that if um, we're requesting teachers to be back in the classroom that I'd like to meet in person. And just one other other thing, I believe that um, it, it might, we, we can obviously conduct meetings on Zoom and do it effectively, but there is something about being in person that I feel like brings a better connection and energy. And as a new member of the board, I'm looking forward to that experience as well, because um, you know we are a governance team and it would be nice to feel more like that. Um, and I know that's, that's, that's really not an, a relevant reason why to have them, but I think that, I think that in-person does make a difference. And you know, um, that's why they show up to Congress and the Senate to make those important votes in person. Um, <laughs> So, so if we're going to talk about this, David, <laughs> the top, David's head will blow off. <laughs> no, actually, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I think we all felt it when we were new to the board, how we were welcomed with open arms and supported um, by this team. And those of us that have seen other teams, it's not always that way. So uh, and, and so far, you've had to miss that. So I, I totally get that. So it sounds to me like there is a majority of the board that wants to resume to in-person meetings at our next board meeting. Is that correct? Is that the consensus? I think so. Okay, including Sunita. Did you have anything you wanted to add to that, Sunita? Um, I just wanted to say I agree with Trustee Pombo that if the teachers are gonna be back, um, it's better for us to be back. But I also get what President Lampel was saying with the fact that the teachers they need to be there more than we do because we can still communicate over video but if it's going to bring a better sense of communication i think that we should just go forward with it okay you scared me i thought you were going to say you were agreeing that we shouldn't model ourselves after oh, our no. <laughs> 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 okay so we'll you know, did not any... say that <laughs> <laughs> no she did not <laughs> Okay, so pending any um, big changes in numbers and stuff like that, um, our next meeting will be in person. Um, okay. Uh, moving on to calendar. On Thursday, February 4th, there will be a facilities committee meeting at 630 and that will be virtual. On Wednesday, February 10th, a wellness committee meeting at 3.30 virtual. On Tuesday, February 16th, an education committee meeting, 6.30. These are all planned to be virtual at this time. Wednesday, February 17th, safety committee meeting, 3.30. Um, and when, also Wednesday, February 17th is the next governing board meeting at seven o'clock, which no longer will be virtual. So in a few minutes, we will be meeting in closed session to consider the following items. A, public employee discipline dismissal release complaint, government code 54957. Item B, conference with labor negotiators, government code 54957.6. Item C, consider approval of a leave of absence for a classified employee. And item D, conference with real property negotiators. Do we have a motion? Move to adjourn to close session. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Trustee Bonilla and a second by Trustee Olson to adjourn this open session at 7.50 p.m. Send an email, right? Yeah. Okay, and board so members, you have a different um, Zoom click for closed session. Thank so you, Sunita. Everybody knows you have an email with a Zoom in it, right? Right. Colin? Do we have a five-minute break between sessions? Are we actually, yes. are we actually going to take a vote to, to um, yeah. close, uh, adjourn? Yeah. Oh. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. Oh, student preferential vote? Aye. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries with five eyes. <laughs> Um, Good night, so, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Okay, we are reconvening from closed session at 8.34 p.m. During closed session, the board took the following action. The board took action on a motion by Trustee Clements and seconded by Trustee Bonilla to deny the long-term leave of absence for classified employee 130240 from January 28th, 2021 through February 25th, 2021 by the following vote of five ayes. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> okay, on a motion by Trustee Pombo and seconded by Trustee Bonilla, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. We are adjourned at 8.35 p.m. Have a great night, everybody. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.